Okay, hi, we're going to talk about saturated fat. Is saturated fat satanic fat? You know, kind of an exaggeration, but a little of a bit of alliteration there. Okay, the first thing is saturated fat will increase your LDL cholesterol. LDL cholesterol is a bridging molecule. A bridging molecule is something that causes red blood cells to stick together. The mechanism of sticking together is red blood cells on their outer surface, they have what is called a glycocalyx. And these are glycoproteins with sialic acid residues that have a negative charge upon them. Typically the negative charged uh, sialic acids will attract to themselves the positively charged sodiums and outside of that will be the negatively charged chlorines. But the point is normally the red blood cells, because of these negative charges, they repel each other and they flow happily independently of each other. I drew the RBCs here with smiley faces, meaning that they're flowing independently of each other in the blood under normal conditions and they each independently will pass through a capillary individually. That's what you want. Typical red blood cells about the same size as a capillary, about five to seven microns, and they have to deform a little bit to pass through the capillary. A slight slowing down is normal to facilitate gas exchange and whatnot, but um, you don't want the red blood cells all stick together. When the red blood cells all stick together, that's called a rouleau formation. It's a French word. It means like a stack of coins. So what causes rouleau formation? Anything that sticks the red blood cells together. So LDL is a bridging molecule. Its charge and size is correct such that it can get the red blood cells to stick together. By the way, why does HDL cholesterol tend to help prevent rouleau in these problems? Because HDL, for whatever the reason of its size, it facilitates the RBCs not sticking together. And there's other things that'll stick RBCs together. These are called bridging molecules. IgM antibodies especially, they're much bigger and bulkier than IgGs. IgGs could do it when they're present in very large amounts, like let's say with multiple myeloma, for example. But um, what else can stick red blood cells together? Fibrinogen will stick them together and function as a bridging molecule. Potentially urate can, that's not yet proven, but that's the theory of some of the atherosclerosis experts of the world, like Dr. Sloop, for example. All right, so here's what a rouleau formation looks like. All the red blood cells are sticking together and I drew them with um, uh, frowning faces. There's a nice video of, uh, I think it's called High Fat Meal Blood Sludge at drmcdougall.com. He's a great nutrition doctor and he's got a nice video of that, what that looks like. Uh, so when the red blood cells are stuck together, it's much harder for them to get through the capillary. So they make the blood thicker. To make the blood thicker is called increased blood viscosity. And Dr. Sloop, the great researcher of atherosclerosis, has shown that increased blood viscosity is sort of the unifying principle underlying almost all atherosclerosis risk factors. So making it hard to, because the blood is thicker, more viscous, harder to pump through a capillaries, blood pressure has to go up. So the heart is now pumping a solution more like a milkshake rather than like water. Okay, blood is not the same as water. Water is a Newtonian fluid, meaning that water is the same whether it's stationary or at motion. Water is not. If you have a cup of water on a table and a cup of blood on a table, the water is going to remain unchanged. The blood, when it sits there, it starts to reversibly aggregate. At least it's reversible initially. Then it forms a progressively thicker, stronger clot. So that's what happened. By the way, you know, you go for a drive, you're in the car for about two hours, when you get out, everything is stiff and you can barely move. That's because your red blood cells are aggregating. It's reversibly initially, of course, but prolonged, not good. When you eat a real high fat meal, uh, especially with a lot of saturated fat, there's other things that can contribute to this as well. You'll get more and more rouleau formation and more and more uh, partial and complete capillary occlusions. Many of those are thought to be reversible, but some of them are not. And that's thought to be a way that people can lose brain tissue and potentially tissue in other parts of their body. There's a lot of papers on that. A really nice one is from like 1964. Friedman's the author. I think it's Journal of Circulation. Plus I've seen a bunch of stuff related to that in mouse models, but it's also in humans. They put like an 80 time magnification microscope right over the person's eye and they could see capillaries occluding in real time after a high fat meal. A little bit of a confounding variable on that one. I think they had some sodium. I'm going to bet there was some sodium involved too, which is a vasoconstrictor and can contribute to that effect. But I look at a lot of brains and I see all these people's brains shrinking over the years. I say, why are these brains shrinking? I don't see anything on the MRI in the region of their cortical gray matter ribbon to explain the shrinkage. And I'll tell you what I think it is. I think it's capillary occlusions due to this Rouleau effect leading to subsequent apoptosis. When there's an acute stroke and a large vessel is occluded, the cells necrose, meaning that their plasma cell membrane is lysed upon death, releasing all their contents, causing inflammation and edema which is visible on MRI. Whereas if you just occlude little, ca little capillaries, you can get a cell to gradually die such that it goes into apoptosis whereby that's like programmed cell death whereby it recycles itself such that you don't get lysis of the cell membrane, you don't get release of the contents and therefore you don't get edema and that's why we can't see it in an MRI.
All right, so anyways, uh, here's our normal endothelial cells are. Those are the lining cells of an artery, and they have negative charges on them in the form of heparin, which also prevents the RBCs from sticking to them. Okay, so that's one major problem with saturated fat. Increasing LDL cholesterol with this entire bridging molecule function, rouleau formation, increased hypertension. Okay, anything that causes high blood pressure is going to cause atherosclerosis. We'll talk more about this in the atherosclerosis lecture, but the gist of it is it increases pressure, which disrupts laminar flow, especially at bifurcations like the carotid and the coronary artery bifurcations, and that disruption of laminar flow is perceived by the endothelial cells as vascular injury such that they shed their glycocalyx like this, and they start to express prothrombotic molecules on their cell surface, and a clot forms. Okay, we'll cover that later, but just so you know, Anytime you hear the word hypertension, the next thought should be increases atherosclerosis. All right, what else? We talked about this in another lecture, how saturated fat increases insulin resistance, and the primary mechanism being that the saturated fat has no double bonds in it. A saturated fat, by the way, here, I'll draw one up here. So a saturated fat is defined by all of the carbons are saturated with hydrogens. Uh, there are no double bonds. If there was one double bond, that would be a monounsaturated fat. And the classic monounsaturated fat is something like olive oil, which primarily has monounsaturated fat. It actually does contain some saturated fat. And then if there's more than one double bond, that would be, between the carbons, that would be a polyunsaturated fatty acid. So a polyunsaturated fatty acid is also called a PUFA. If there was just one, then it would be a MUFA, monounsaturated fatty acid. Okay? Usually people refer to sat fat as just sat fat, saturated fat. So anyways, what I'm saying is saturated fat is, has more of an effect to increase LDL cholesterol. And we talked about the Rouleau formation here. Saturated fat also causes more of a problem for insulin resistance. And that's thought to be the fact that you have to make a double bond as the first step in beta oxidation to catabolize, degrade a saturated fat and burn it for energy, so to speak, that that leads to increased FADH2 electron carriers going to electron transport that overwhelm electron transport because it's getting a lot of electron carriers from other locations as well. So increased insulin resistance. Increased insulin resistance leads to diabetes. Bad, bad, bad. Diabetes is a really bad thing. The metabolic disaster. Okay, eventually blood glucose goes up and the hyperglycemia has other problems associated with it. The hyperinsulinemia, so insulin goes up because you got insulin resistance. The pancreas initially tries to compensate for insulin resistance by producing more insulin. As you get increased insulin in the blood, you then use up what you have of this insulin lysin enzyme, sometimes called insulin degrading enzyme. And it has higher affinity for insulin than it does for beta amyloid protein in the brain. But it also is one of the things that removes beta amyloid protein in the brain. And that's one of the reasons. There's actually more why diabetes predisposes to Alzheimer's disease. Because you're using up your insulin degrading enzyme to clear these excessive amounts of insulin, these high levels of insulin in the blood, and you don't have any left over, not enough, to help clear out the beta amyloid in the brain, which is associated with Alzheimer's. Okay, what else about saturated fat? Increased dietary saturated fat is associated with increased risk of obesity. If you look at the basal metabolic, uh, the BMIs, body mass index of uh, vegans around 22, uh, they're, or 23, and then the more meat a person eats, the higher their, their average uh, BMI goes. Um, the next point is to talk about epidemiology. Well, just whatever populations eat less fat fat, they tend to be skinnier and have less of these atherosclerosis, diabetes type diseases. The one other point, I don't have it written down on here, but the saturated fat also makes the red blood cell membrane stiffer. And the reason is a saturated fat tail is like this. They interdigitate the adjacent saturated fats in the plasma membrane. So they stick together tighter. If you think about it, just think about your kitchen. Saturated fat is solid fat at room temperature in general. Whereas polyunsaturated fatty acids like your vegetable oils, your omega-3 oils, all that stuff, it tends to be liquid at room temperature. So this is more predisposing towards being solid. And it's also more rigid within the plasma cell membrane. So when these are incorporated into the, the fatty acids of the phospholipid bilayer of these red blood cells, they make the red blood cells stiffer, which makes them less able to deform themselves 
to pass through um, the capillaries. So there's, there's a whole scientific literature on the red blood cell deformability. And you have less red blood cell deformability when you have increased dietary intake of saturated fat. And that decrease in deformability increases your blood viscosity, your blood thickness. Because your red blood cells are like 99.9% .9 of your red, the cells in your blood. So when they're stiff, you're, you've got much thicker blood, got to pump more pressure to get them through. Once you're pumping at a higher pressure, you're, then you're pumping at a higher velocity, and the hypertension can cause more atherosclerosis. You get this whole negative uh, vicious cycle feeding back upon itself. So that's why it's good to minimize your intake of saturated fat. And so anyways, that was a key point. Saturated fat is problematic because it increases LDL, leading to low formation, increased hypertension and increased atherosclerosis as well as insulin resistance and then leading to increased uh, risk of diabetes and the problems related to that. And to convince yourself of that, just look at the epidemiology of populations who eat more or less saturated fat and you'll find that to be the case.